And the saga continues. I didn't think I was going to make another video about this, but as I'm sure you've been following along with the last few videos where I've talked about the Linux community's thoughts on what's happening over at what's happening over at Red Hat and how they're closing off some of the repository sources. Now Oracle has finally responded to Red Hat in a new blog called Keep Linux Open and Free. We can't afford not to. This is from the chief corporate architect and and seems to be co-written by the head of Oracle Linux development and is very interesting with mixed feelings across the overall Linux community about this blog post already. We'll dive in to what was said in the blog post. I'll read it out as well as summarize some of these paragraphs for us. I'm very excited to read this. I didn't think I'd be back to this, but let's dig in. So first off, Oracle has been part of the Linux community for 25 years. Our goal has remained the same over all those years. Help make Linux the best server operating system for everyone, freely available to all with high quality, low cost support provided to those who need it. Basically, they're highlighting their 25 years of involvement in this first paragraph. Our Linux engineering team makes significant contributions to the kernel file systems and tools. We push all the work back to mainline so that every Linux distribution can include it. We are proud those contributions are part of the reason Linux is now so very capable, benefiting not just Oracle customers, but all users. Their claim here is that the goal is to help make Linux a wonderful supported server operating system, offering low cost support. And in 2006, we launched what is now called Oracle Linux, a RHEL compatible distribution and support offering that is used widely and powers Oracle's engineered systems and our cloud infrastructure. We chose RHEL to be compatible because we did not want to fragment the Linux community. Our effort to remain compatible has been enormously successful in all the years since launch. We have had almost no compatibility bugs filled. Customers and ISVs can switch to Oracle Linux from RHEL without modifying their applications. And we certify that Oracle software products on RHEL, even though they are built and tested on Oracle Linux only, never on RHEL. So they seem to be claiming, just like RHEL claims, that they contribute, just like Red Hat claims, Oracle's engineering team contributes to the kernel and open source. And with that, while Oracle and IBM have compatible Linux distributions, we have very different ideas about our responsibilities as open source stewards. This is where we start to kind of see a response to Red Hat or RHEL's ideologies from Oracle. And they say, and about operating under GPL version two, Oracle has always made Oracle Linux binaries and source freely available to all. We do not have a subscription agreement that interferes with a subscriber's rights to redistribute. Oracle Linux. On the other hand, IBM subscription agreements specify that you are in breach if you use those subscription services to exercise the GPL version two rights. And now as of June 21st, IBM no longer publicly releases RHEL source code. It's very interesting. And you may have noticed that while we're talking about Red Hat and RHEL, that they're now introducing the name IBM. This is because IBM made a deal to purchase Red Hat for close to $34 billion. So it seems that Oracle is definitely pointing that out that IBM may have very well been involved in the decision of closing these sources, which has now affected all the Linux, Rocky Linux, and of course, Oracle Linux. I talk in a previous one of my videos about the relationship between all of these I'll post a link in the description below, but why did IBM make this change? We'll note that they keep calling Red Hat IBM from what I can tell or understand. Well, if you read IBM's blog attempting to explain the rationale, it boils down to this. If we check out this blog, of course, they're referring to Red Hat's response that was called Red Hat's commitment to open source, a response to the git centos.org changes that sparked even more questions an outrage in the community on the decision that Red Hat had actually made previous to this post. Anyways, they specifically took this out of the post. At Red Hat, thousands of people spend their time writing code to enable new features, fixing bugs, integrating different packages, and then supporting that work for a long time. We have to pay the people to do that work. Then it said, interesting. 
IBM doesn't want to continue publicly releasing RHEL source code because it has to pay its engineers, that seems odd. Given that Red Hat has been has a successful independent open source company, chose to publicly release RHEL source and pay its engineers for many years before IBM required Red Hat in 2019 for $34 billion. Like I spoke about before, Oracle is criticizing or what seems to be criticizing IBM's decision to release that RHEL source code and speculating on the motives and whether or not IBM is actually behind it, which a lot of the community has been doing as well. We've seen in previous weeks how much the community has been sharing that same sentiment. We'll continue reading the blog goes on mentioning CentOS. It is no surprise CentOS was top of mind for the author attempting to justify withholding RHEL source. CentOS has, has been a very popular free RHEL compatible distribution. In December of 2020, IBM effectively killed it as a free alternative to RHEL. The new alternatives to RHEL have sprung up in CentOS's place. I've spoke about this before, and I'll say it again, Alma Linux and Rocky Linux. Now, by withholding RHEL source code, IBM has directly attacked them. They leave themselves out of this, of course, but nonetheless, this affects Oracle as well. And perhaps the real answer to the question of why eliminate competitors, fewer competitors means more revenue opportunity for IBM. As for Oracle, now they're talking about themselves, we will continue pursuing our goal for Linux as transparently as and openly as we've always have while minimizing fragmentation. As they mentioned, this was their goal from the beginning, at least they claim, to make sure that the community wouldn't be fragmented. We will continue to develop the and test our software products on Oracle Linux. Oracle Linux will continue to be RHEL compatible to the extent we can make it so. In the past, Oracle's access to published RHEL source has been important for maintaining that compatibility. From a practical standpoint, we believe Oracle Linux will remain compatible as it has always been through the release 9.2, but after that, there may be a greater chance for compatibility issues to arise. If an incompatibility does affect a customer or ISV, Oracle will work to remediate the problem. This seems like basically some reassurance from Oracle that they're gonna continue supporting the RHEL compatible Linux distribution. And they want to emphasize to Linux developers, Linux customers, and Linux distributors that Oracle is committed to Linux freedom. Oracle makes the following promise. As long as Oracle distributes Linux, Oracle will make the binaries and source code for that distribution publicly and freely available. Furthermore, Oracle welcomes downstream distributions of every kind, community and commercial. We are happy to work with distributors in, to ease the, that process, work together on content of Oracle Linux and ensure Oracle software products are certified on your distribution. This is an open invitation for collaboration of the open source community by Oracle. And by the way, if you are a Linux developer who disagrees with IBM's actions and you believe in Linux freedom the way we do, we are hiring. A soft blow to IBM and Red Hat, of course, saying, come join our team because the other team doesn't seem to be in quite the same spirit as Oracle. One observation for ISVs, IBM's actions are not in your best interest. By killing CentOS and RHEL alternative and attacking Alma Linux and Rocky Linux, funny how they don't mention themselves, IBM is eliminating one way your customers save money and make a larger share of their wallet available to you. If you don't yet support your product on Oracle Linux, we would be happy to show you how easy that is. Give your customers more choice. Funny how Oracle is not only poking Red Hat, but it's also asking people to give Oracle a try instead of sticking to RHEL. And finally, in what seems to be further shade thrown, the final few sentences here in the last paragraph, finally to IBM, here's a big idea for you. You say that you don't want to pay all those RHEL developers. Here's how you can save money. Just pull from us. Become a downstream distributor of Oracle Linux. We'll be happy to take on the burden. Definitely some company to company shade being thrown 
there at the end. Really funny. Now, I do want to break down the overall community's sentiment on this article in response to what Red Hat has done in closing off their sources. While a lot of people are actually appreciating Oracle's transparency to the Linux community and trying to keep things free and actually open source, they are happy, but Oracle does have some history themselves, including some history with Open Solaris. Overall, sediments do seem to be positive. Of course, there are skeptics with a lot of the community seemingly, some being surprised, others confused, and actually even rooting for Oracle, which, which I don't think a lot of people believe that they'd end up on that side. A lot, of course, are still remaining critical, saying that Oracle's intentions are opportunistic, meaning they're trying to use this as a moment to capitalize for themselves. Of course, there are broader implications on this situation and fragmentation happening to the Linux community, so it's good to be, to be skeptical and critical of everything being said here. As a breakdown, in my understanding, this is a highlight of the 25-year involvement of Oracle in the Linux community. They emphasized how much they work on the kernel file systems and in adding tools to Linux. They explained the decision initially at least to create Oracle Linux as a rel compatible distribution because they wanted to avoid fragmentation and maintain cap compatibility between the two. They've criticized the Red Hat quote unquote IBM's decision in this recent change that they've publicly announced of closing up the sources and speculate why they've done this and whether or not it's to eliminate competitors and gain more market share. Oracle by the end reaffirms its commitment to the Linux community and free and open source software, promising to make their distributions, binaries, and source code publicly available. And they invite all the developers who disagree with IBM's actions to join Oracle instead and it suggests that ISVs do the same. Well, that's about it. What do you think? Let me know. Let's discuss this in the comments section below. Love to hear from the community. Again, I wasn't expecting to make another one of these videos in this what seems to be long saga of back and forth between the community, Oracle Linux, Rocky Linux, Alma Linux, and everybody else involved. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to learn.savvynick.com now and get access to these sheets.